Hello viewers, this Dow Too Fast here. In today's video, I will be doing a full install and review of this Akaso full screen LCD rear view mirror dash cam. This one I have here is the model DL9. Let me unbox this and I'll show you what comes with this system. And here's a rear view mirror dash cam. Power cable, rear camera, and the video cable that connects to the rear camera, pry bar, rubber straps for installing the rear view mirror, plastic clips, quick reference guide, cleaning cloth, and a 32 gigabyte memory card. Here's a look at everything you get with the Steel 9 car dash camera. Let's have a closer look at this 10 inch full LCD rear view mirror dash cam. Now I do like the overall design of this mirror. If you look at the edge here, it has a nice round beveled edge all the way around. Looking at the back, here we have the speaker, the recess switch, the front camera. Now these two straps will allow you to strap this onto your existing mirror using the included rubber straps. Hook one end to here, wrap it around the rear view mirror and then hook it to the other end. Do the same thing with the other strap. At the bottom is a power switch. At the top you have the memory card slot. In the middle is the AV port for connecting the rear camera. And on the far right is the mini USB connector for powering the dash cam. Now both the front and rear camera records in 1080p. And while driving it does record both camera views simultaneously. You can adjust the angle of the camera. You can also slide this out to fit the width of the rear view mirror. Here I'll install the 32 gigabyte memory card that's included. This power cable you see here is 11 feet long. Plug the end with the mini USB connector to the power port at the top of the mirror. Connect the other end of the cable to your car's 12 volt accessory port. The rear camera cable is 20 feet long, which will allow you to run it from the front of the vehicle all the way to the back. Connect this plug to the AV in at the top of the dash cam. Mount this rear camera at the back of your vehicle. Now this red cable you see here will be connected to your reverse light. So when you put the car in reverse, the LCD display will switch to the backup view so you can use it as a backup mirror. Let's power this on. Once your unit is powered on, the recording will begin automatically. That's indicated by the flashing red dot right here. On the right side, you have the time and dates. Now right now, you're looking at the rear camera view. If you swipe to the left or right, now we'll switch to the front camera. To get into the setup menu, if you tap the screen, you can adjust the brightness. To go into setup, stop the recording, press the setup button. Here you can change the resolution, default is 1080p. Loop recording, default is 3 minutes. Gravity sensor or G sensor, right now it's set to low. Let's change it to medium. Parking monitor is off. Go down. Next menu, screensaver. Right now it's off. With a screensaver, if you want to turn off the LCD while it's recording, you can set the time for this. Boot streaming, default is on. Language setting is English. Date format, default is set to month, day and year. Video watermark is on. Touch tone is off. You can turn this on if you want. Volume, default set to medium. Wide dynamic range is on. Frequency, 60 hertz. Day and time, here you can set the day and time. Format, to format the memory card. Default setting, to revert back to factory default. Software version number. When you're done, exit. On this lower menu, you can also mute the microphone. While it's recording, you can press this lock button to lock this video clip. So if you see something happening on the road and you want to lock this video clip, you can press this lock icon. At the bottom, you have the power button. If you tap it once, it'll turn off the LCD. Press it again, it'll turn off the date and time. Press it one more time, it'll turn it back on. So let's take this to the car and get it installed. 
To install the stash cam mirror, adjust the front camera so it'll fit over the existing mirror. Bring the strap around to the back and we'll wrap it around. And hook the rubber strap onto the bottom hook. Same thing for the other one. Connect your AV cable and the power cable. Now don't forget to remove the protective film, otherwise the image will be a bit blurry. Run the two wires up to the headliner and over to the A pillar. Now with the power wire, run it down to the center console and the rear camera cable for this minivan is easiest if you run it up along the headliner all the way to the back. I ran the power wire down along the side and then bring this wire over to the center console. Plug your power adapter into your 12 volt outlet. For the rear camera cable, I tuck the cable behind this panel on the A pillar and then place this cable behind this rubber molding and run it all the way to the back of the vehicle. This rear camera is waterproof so you can install it outside of the vehicle or inside the vehicle. If you install it outside, you can place it next to your license plate. If you install this inside the vehicle, then you can mount this directly onto the back window. I'll install the rear camera on this trim piece right here and place it right in the middle. Adjust the angle. Here's a rear camera cable I ran from the front and this is the rear camera cable. Connect these two connectors together. You can tuck the rest of the cable behind this panel. On this vehicle, the backup light is on the hatch right here. So you want to tap the wire that will give you 12 volt when you put the car in reverse. Twist the bulb counterclockwise. And here's the backup bulb. Here I'll be using a T-tap. Run this wire that you just tapped down the side and to the back of the vehicle. This red wire is from the rear camera cable and this other red wire is from the backup lights. Connect the two red wires together. I'm going to tuck this behind this panel right here and put the molding back on. Start the car up. Right now you're looking at the rear view and the recording has started. If you swipe it, now you're looking at the front camera. Now if you swipe up and down, you change your view. If you have the red wire on the rear camera cable connected to your backup light, let me show you how the display will switch from this regular back view to a backup camera view. As you can see, when I put the car in reverse, you have the parking guidelines and also the angle of the view is lower now. Now you can also adjust this viewing angle. As you can see, it goes very low so you can see exactly what's behind the vehicle. If I put it back in the park, it'll switch back to the regular view. And this is a great feature and it'll help you back up the vehicle if you cannot see what's behind you. Let me show you another benefit of having a system like this. Let's say if you're carrying a lot of stuff in your cargo, normally you would not be able to see out of your back window. But with a rear camera, you can clearly see what's behind your vehicle. Now when you turn off the vehicle, the dash cam will remain on for about 10 seconds and then turn off. Now one thing I want to mention on a very bright sunny day like today, the LCD display will be hard to see because the ambient light is just too bright. And this is typical of all LCD rear view mirror. In a situation like this, what you should do is press a power switch to turn off the LCD and use the LCD mirror as a regular mirror. Here's a look at the nighttime view when you're backing up the vehicle.
Let me show you the playback function on this dash cam. Now you'll first need to stop the recording. Then you can press the playback menu right here. Now it comes up with a list of recorded video files. Tap the screen. Go back. Now right now we're looking at the front video folder. You can also look at the rear video folder. The other two folders are for the lock videos and lock photos. When you're done, go back. Start the recording. After testing this Akaso DL9 Full LCD rearview mirror dash cam, overall it performed quite well. I do like the overall design of this mirror. With a curved edge and a good quality mirror, it almost has an OEM look to it. The user interface is very easy to use with a touchscreen LCD. You can swipe left and right to switch between the front view and the rear view. And if you swipe up and down, you'll change the angle of the view. As for the installation, I found it to be pretty simple. The mirror is installed using two rubber straps. And you only have to run two wires, one for power and one for the rear camera. Now you do have the option to connect to the rear tail light and that'll give you a backup view with parking guidelines. Now as I showed you in the video, on a very bright sunny day, you won't really be able to see the LCD display. And that's typical of any LCD mirror devices because the very bright ambient light will wash out the backlighting of the LCD. Any other time of the day, this unit works very well. With a full LCD screen, you can see what's happening in front of you and behind you. And as I demonstrated, this is very useful if your cargo area is filled with a lot of stuff and you can't see out of your back window. Or perhaps you have a work van and the visibility to the back is limited. Now one thing with a live view of the rear camera, it does require some ambient light for you to see the image. So if you're driving on a road where there are no street lights, that image is quite dark. Now looking at the video recording of the front and rear camera, I found it to be very good. You can definitely read license plates directly in front of you or behind you. Overall, it's a pretty good unit. It does exactly what it's designed to do. So if this is something that you might be interested in getting for your vehicle, you can check out the link in the description below. I hope you enjoy watching this video, and remember to click on thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.